Welcome back. This is going to be the final uh, video in the series of modeling and texturing and rendering of this aerosol spray can. So I went ahead and actually dived into the actual texturing and just kind of came up with something really simple and basic for a spray can. You know, I splattered paint all over it and created some cool effects and that's pretty it's it's for what it is it's not great but it, it's certainly a start as to what you can do with it as far as what Photoshop will let you do as far as you know letting it you know stand out with all this paint splatter and creating some of those cool you know brush like effects of the paint kind of spilling down etc so I mean, obviously it's not reaching to this point so we'd have to kind of go into that. But this is what I've been playing around with and this is what you can ultimately achieve by texturing and you know going the extra mile. So, but obviously you have to figure out, well how did I get to this point? Well, that's obviously the case. So, I'm going to go ahead and just um not save this and restart it from where I was. So, let me just go ahead and cancel all that. And then I'm going to cancel this. Then I'm going to bring back my original can before I exported the UVs and start from there. So let me just go back to my default render and then go into our UV texture editor, look at our UVs, and see what we have. So this is what I have for our final unwrap. Um, if you have something similar, that's fine. If not, then just go ahead and unwrap anything else. Just, you know, do a cylindrical unwrap with the base of the top cap. And then I placed a, uh, you know, a planar map on the, where the hole is. The circular edge, I just planar mapped it and placed it in the texture. Okay. All right, so once you have done that, select all your UVs. You're going to want to do a UV uh, a polygons, and then you're going to do a, a layout. What this will do is this will pl um, place your UVs into the 0 to 1 space um, through its own algorithm. However, depending on what texture or what part of the model you want to show off most, you know, it varies. So let me just go ahead and for the sake of expediency, try it out. And then they will place the UVs perfectly aligned in the zero to one space and this looks pretty good I mean this is the one piece where we're going to want to show off the most is our base and our top piece because that's what we're going to ultimately see versus let's say you know this piece right here we're not going to see as much into detail unless we zoom on in so this is pretty good you always want to emphasize the, p the part that's going to be seen um, you know the most versus what's not going to be seen so so once you have done that, go back into your UV texture editor, select all the UVs, polygons, UV snapshot. From here, you're going to want to name your file. So you can name it whatever. I usually do the, I usually try to go with the naming convention of can UVs. And we're going to overwrite it, save and replace. Uh, size, I usually go with a 1024 by 1024, you know, uh, render output, but you can obviously go 2048 or lower, 512 to, you know, 256, depending on what you want to, what, depending on what you're rendering, rendering this for. UV range, 0 to 1, and then image format, JPEG. So once you've done that, press OK, overwrite, and you're done. So now we're going to go ahead and import them into Photoshop. All right, so we've imported our UVs into Photoshop. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, start the process of adding some textures in here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go into your background layer, unlock it by double clicking, and then just name this whatever the heck you want. I usually go with UVs, press OK. And then you're going to want to create a new layer. And then I found some texture of a metal piece. It's a brushed metal. It's not the best looking thing, but it's something we can go off with for what we, for what we have. So make sure you go ahead and select it by uh, doing a Command A or Control A, and then Control C or Command C, and then paste it into your document right here, and then scale it down globally, making and holding while holding down Shift, 
so you can get it exactly how you want it to fit in the resolution of the photograph. So let's scale down a little bit more. That looks good, and then just fill it up within this realm. There you go. All right, so the next thing you're going to want to do is go into your UVs layer, select your magic wand tool, make sure you go ahead and select everything within it. So make sure there's, you know, dancing lines going all around everything. If not, then, you know, keep trying. Make sure your sample size is a little higher. Mine's at 5.5, 5 by 5, so that's a little strange. Tolerance at 15, you know, increase it. Then once you've done that, go into your layer or your metal layer, and then hit delete. And there you go. So what this does is it selects everything within the layer, but then it deletes the background, but still keeps the images within the body of the UVs. So now you don't even have to scale them inward, or you, have to, you don't have to do anything adjusting to it, just so they can fit. They just automatically adjust to wherever the magic wand selects them. So it's a little neat trick that I learned. All right, so obviously this isn't all metal. So we're going to want to make sure we go ahead and figure out where the endpoints are to our model. So let's go back into Maya and just kind of make sure what's, what we're going to have selected is metal versus what isn't. And everything above this is going to be metal versus what this is going to be. So obviously this is going to be probably the cap piece is going to be um, something different. So we'll make sure we don't want to select that. And then we also want to make sure that when we select this, is uh, this is also um, taken into metal. So, but then of course the base of the can is going to be different. So, make sure we select this and we select this, these faces. Then go into our UV texture editor and then just make sure where those are. And then we can kind of tell from glancing that anything above this line will ultimately be um, metal versus what isn't um, will be the base. So anything above those lines, we just want to make sure we keep that in mind as we're texturing. So let's go back into Photoshop and we're going to zoom on in and then just kind of tell where our line is. So probably about right here is where we're going to want to end it. So get our eraser tool, select an eraser, all right, that's good. Scale it down, then just kind of look at it, and then go to work. So about right here, we're going to want to erase this part, and then go downward, erase, Oops, no, I don't want to do that. That. Oops, too far. There you go. Okay, so anything below it will be metal, and anything um, around this area will not. So let's zoom on out, fit to screen. <laughs> and then we're going to take our layer or our eraser tool and just erase what we don't need. So obviously we're not going to need this because that's not going to be metal. Uh, hold down shift and then you can get a straight line edge when you erase it. There you go. The same thing, just lower your brush size so you're not erasing anything above here. And away you go. Okay, so now we have our metal pieces in, in place. So we're going to name this layer Metal Pieces. We're going to turn our U, um, UVs off because now we want to check and make sure everything's um, in place. So we're going to turn our UVs off. We're going to go ahead to File, Save As. Um, we're going to name this our Diffuse Layer, JPEG. Save, replace, 
image quality, make sure it's at 12, and then OK. Hide it, back into Maya. We're going to then get rid of our checker material and place a new file node in there. Filler type, off. Find our diffuse file and then put it in. And then press 6 to see your texture and there you go. So this looks pretty good. I mean, it's obviously not the best texture in the world, but for what it is, we'll just go with it. So then what we're going to want to do is make sure we look at this in our render, um, in our, in through my uh, mental ray. So go into your render settings, render using, make sure you use mental rays on. If you don't have it, um, if you don't have, if you don't get that option, it's because you don't have it turned on. So if you want to turn it on, go to window, settings, preferences, plugin manager. And then make sure your Maya Metal Ray uh, plugin is on. So just select those. Refresh and close. And then it should be on. So obviously we have our Metal Ray on. Preset. Let's go up to 1080 just so we can get a good view of it. Zoom in and render. Okay, so for what it is, it's pretty good. Not the greatest. Obviously, if you want, you can change the, um, the you know, the no type. So let's say Lambert to let's say, I don't know, Blin to give it more of a shinier look to it. Oops. And then we'll just render it again. And that looks all right. But, you know, obviously we want that shine to it. But we don't want this whole can to be shiny as well. So, again, it depends. This is why lighting is going to be a huge factor when you do go ahead and try to light it yourself. All right, so let's go back and jump into Photoshop here. Turn back our UVs. And let's go ahead and do something with the base of the can. So let's make a new layer. Oops, name is base. And then obviously for a color, let's go with something like gray or something, you know, dark gray, light gray, depending on what you want to go with. Now for this part, I usually go with a rectangular fill in, which is a little strange since, you know, obviously you could just brush it in, but this gives us a more accurate representation of the shape that we're going trying to follow. So obviously it just calls for it. So let's just kind of perfectly and accurately try to line this up. There you go. And just kind of move it a little bit. Um, it's a little bit catching this edge, but I guess we can just kind of stretch it out a little bit. You know, it's better to go, it's better to get, be a little bit too big than to be too small. Because if you're too small, then you'll see some, you'll see your UV lines and little po uh, pockets of white, which is not really a good sign. All right, so before you can do anything with the rectangular square, you have to raterize it, which means in order for it to be edited, you have to raterize the shape. So anything you do beyond this point will ultimately be, you know, will ultimately be changed. So then you can go and um, manipulate it however you want. So now we have the basic uh, color for our can. So let's go ahead and turn that off and do another save, diffuse. Photoshop, make sure, um, before you do, when you do save it, let me just go back, uh, make sure you save it as a PSD first. This will allow you to kind of go back, um, allow you to have a save point. So let's say, for example, you mess up on the on the JPEG of the diffuse texture. You can resort back to your PSD, and then what this will allow you to do is you can resort back to an old file or, an old, you know, you didn't make as much progress um, before you messed something up. So it's, a, it's kind of like a safe haven point. So make sure you save it as a PSD for, um, for that sake. But for now, we'll just save it as a JPEG. Um, we'll save it as a JPEG for the diffuse. And of course, it's a repeat of repetitive process. Again, save, replace. Okay. Back into Maya, texture, reload, and there you go. All right. So now we have our color down. So now we have a gray um, base of a can, and then we have our metal all across. So that works. So now let's go ahead and, you know, add something to make this stand out a little more because it looks a little too plain. I found some reference on Google Images and just kind of play around with it. So here's some of the references I found. Like you can go with something like this as a design, like you have paint coming out of this. Um, obviously this is just the design of the can, but that's pretty neat. And then you got something like this where you can add like, you know, a little sort of like little blood splatters, but it's actually just paint. And you can go with whatever color you want. I mean, this is just, you know, it's endless fun of whatever you wanted to go with. So, 
Um, I guess for the top cap, we can probably just leave it as a whatever. You know, maybe we can make it orange of some sort. So, you know, and then we can kind of re re resort back to our other references. Like, let's say, for example, this. Let's look at this. You can see that with, with some of the details that really makes your models and, you know, your objects stand out more is the detail. So you have these paint splatters all around here. Obviously, when you're when you're sp using a spray can, you're obviously going to get um, splatters of paint ricocheting right off of it, which creates this. So something where we can emulate this and create something that almost duplicates that would be awesome. And even just around here, even if even if it doesn't show up as strongly, still you always want to put it there just to emphasize that yes, this has this can has been used, and we can go ahead and um, try to mimic that. So that's pretty cool. So let's go back and jump into Photoshop here. Turn our UVs back on. Uh, for the cap, I'm just going to leave it for now, but we will go ahead and adjust that later. Um, for a color, you know, you can go with uh, whatever color you want. Let's go with something like maybe green for our, for a paint. So now when you want to add in some details, always do it on a separate layer. Or is how I like to do it. So we'll just name this up. Uh, paint splatter uh, base and the reason why you want to do it on a separate layer is because let's say for example you did it on the default layer well obviously you don't want to you know let's say you made a mistake oh shoot I used the wrong color and you go to your erase tool and now you're erasing the whole thing you don't want to do that so let's go back you want to always do it on a separate layer and then for our brushes, let's go in and just kind of determine what we can find. I have, I did download some default ones or some custom ones. So obviously yours, it's not going to exactly resemble. Um, you're not, you probably won't have this. So you know, this is what I was able to find. Um, you go into Google and you type in, you know, spray can brush brush presets, and, or something similar. And then what ends up happening, oops, is you can find some um you know you can find some brush brush presets that look like you know that look exactly like a spray can or something that resembles it so something like this which is pretty cool so we'll just kind of increase the opacity here so you can find something like that that looks sort of like you know it looks sort of like blood splatter but it also can resemble paint so and obviously you don't even have to go by what this brush is i mean just because it looks like that doesn't mean you have to go by the exact reference. You can go into your eraser tool and start erasing stuff like, you know, something like that to create a little bit more of an interesting look because nothing is really, when you when you have paint splatter, it depends. You know, nothing's really ever perfect when it comes to, you know, something that splatters everywhere. You're always going to have, you know, these kind of weird marks in it just to sort of create this sense of, you know, uh, you know, something like that. So it's never really straight. It's, there's always some like m cuts in it, uh, so to speak. So you never want to have your textures to be too, I guess, quote unquote, for lack of a better term, perfect. You always want something to really give it some worn out look. So even when you, you can, you can turn down the opacity on it and you can just start erasing some of it. Like, let's say for an example, I want to go ahead and erase a little bit more on this area. You know, I can just go ahead and just tweak that, or I can just go and tweak this, and so on and so forth. So, at least now it's giving it more of an interesting look to it. Okay, so once we have that set, let's do it the same thing. Let's kind of look at it from our um, perspective in Maya and see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and kind of square this, round this off a little bit more. When you have any hard edges, like straight edges like this, you always try to manipulate that because you don't want that. Otherwise, it's going to look obvious you place something on there. So, okay. So save it. Diffuse. JPEG. Save. Back into Maya. Then color. Reload. And there you go. So now we can go ahead and render this and see what it looks like. And that looks a little better. Obviously, what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you're placing the detail on there, that it flows. It doesn't, you know, you never want your your details to resemble something that you just that that it look flat. That that just you just put on there, but it doesn't flow with the can. You know, you want to create this detail right here. So let's just kind of scroll on down. Oops. 
like something around here. You see how the paint is on this part of the can, but it's also reaching onto the bottom part? Well, that makes more sense rather than it just being clean up here versus being dirty up here. Otherwise, why bother? And it just doesn't pull off that realistic um, look to it. So that's why when you kind of make your texture or add in your details, you want to take that into consideration. So um, for the top part, same thing. We can, you know, you can use a different uh, splattering technique. You can use a drip, like let's say it's dripping from the can. So something like that. So we can just kind of eyeball it. That looks pretty cool. And then we'll go ahead and use our eraser and just start erasing anything that doesn't look right. Um, you don't have to go with this exact brush. You can obviously change it a bit. Um, let's see. Just kind of play around with it. That looks weird. Um, you can use some soft brushes or sponge looking like ones just to kind of create more of a sense to it. So just that looks pretty cool. And then just soften up these edges. And there you go. Then if you want, you can erase it as a whole, and start over. Otherwise, this is what you have. And then we'll just go ahead and save it again, just to kind of look at our results. This is the process of texturing um, objects, is that it's just going back and forth, look, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. All right, so now obviously you can tell that, all right, well, we added some um, paint to it, but you know, we were kind of lacking in this area. So obviously we want to make sure we get, we make sure we uh, cover that one area too. Obviously otherwise it doesn't look right. So go into our brush tool again and then find a different brush preset we can use. That looks pretty cool. Um, what else? I mean, these are the ones I downloaded, so obviously you're not going to have these, but um, just find whatever you can. Let's see. I think this one's a default one. So you can just bring that up. Doesn't look too good, so maybe we'll just keep that out. And then let's see, something like that. That looks okay, but it's coming and going off the texture itself, so maybe we'll have to find something a little bit more convenient. So, that looks cool. Alright, so we'll just size this down and then just start splattering paint all over it. And then, same thing. File, save as, diffuse, JPEG, save, replace, and repeat. Alright, so now we have some paint splattered on there, so that looks pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and put in a color on the top piece. So we'll lock these layers up so we don't select them again on accident. Okay. So now what we're going to want to do is fill in this other piece right there. So what we'll do is do that same method before, except let's do a different color. So let's do like maybe orange. So about there. And then we'll just fill in this entire space. Let me just fit this to the screen. And we will fill in this entire space right there. And then what we're going to do, oops, before we can do anything, obviously, we have to make sure that the shape is raterized. And then we're going to try to perfectly and accurately as we can select that piece right there. There we go. All right, well, it's not really cooperating with us, so we're just going to have to do it the hard way. So we'll create a new layer. Oops. So now we have it perfectly set in there, and then we'll just delete it. But now we have our places other pieces in orange and we don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and erase all this. 
So it's a bit of inconvenient, but unfortunately the magic wand tool will only do whatever the heck it wants to do at some points. All right, and then this is going to be for the top piece, and then this is going to be uh, for the circular area. So now we can put all that back on, and there we go. Okay, so now we have our cap colored in. So we'll just name this cap. And then this is where we can go ahead and add in some more paint. So find our eyedrop tool, figure out what color we used, and go to town. Oh, before you do, always always have an extra layer um, when you do detail. So paint, splatter, two. Okay. So find our brush preset we used before. Something like that. that looks okay. Um, a lot of the, a lot of this looks like blood splatter though, so it doesn't necessarily look right. But for what it is, we'll just keep it. So, and then just try it as best you can to put in the details. So now we have all that splattered. Oh, it's all oh, it's everywhere. And then we can go into our go and use our eraser tool find a good brush we can use to sort of erase all that and kind of just manipulate it so it doesn't look too circular so okay so once you have that set we'll go ahead and save it diffuse jpeg save replace and repeat okay then reload there we go now let's just render that out. All right, so all right, we're getting there. You know, it's progress. It's definitely you know, there's there's so much we can do with this, but for the time frame that we have, I'm only gonna have to show you exactly what we got. So, especially around the circular area, we might want to maybe change this to a black instead of uh, or a gray instead of just orange. So we'd have to go back into our cap layer and change the color of that circular round piece to something more appropriate than just orange itself. So I mean I always have a tendency to be in the wrong tool, so gotta make sure I fix that. Alright, so kind of shape it to where we want, and then we'll maybe go with a uh, possible darker gray just to form that outline and that works paint splatter turn the those off save as diffuse try that again diffuse jpeg save replace and repeat Seems as if I only selected. Seems like I didn't select it. Hmm. Anyway, oh, because I think I'm dealing with that. Oh, that's probably a different piece. That's why. My bad. So we'll go back into our cap, and then we'll see. Oh, wait. We bring our power UVs. That's where we want. So. It's a little error on my part, but that's okay because it's just a learning experience, obviously. So we'll just erase that. So we'll kind of find that area. There you go. And then we'll just fill in something simple, gray. There we go. Now, save it one more time. This is the whole process. You're just going back and forth from Photoshop to Maya just so you can reload those little textures. And there you go. So that looks a lot better. So um, to kind of make this paint stand out a little bit more, you could go into Photoshop and 
let's say for your paint splatter or um, you can double clip and go into your layer style and this is kind of the neat part of it is there's some cool f um, features on here like bevel emboss texture contour which it really gives it a little bit more of an interesting look to it so let's do a bevel emboss and now we can see that all right so now our paint started to get a little bit more depth into there um, it's probably not going to look as good but from what we have though obviously you know with paint it dries up and then it hardens so obviously that can create a little bit of a layer and then you just kind of have to look go around and play around all right play around with the style and see what you can come up with so here's chisel hard it doesn't look right chisel soft yeah looks okay so let's keep it at smooth and then for our depth we'll just kind of decrease it just a little bit so let's say about 32 and then let's save it and kind of look at it from that perspective. So reload. All right, so now we got something a little bit more interesting to look at. Let's look at it through our render and see what it kind of turns out. So not bad. All right, obviously we can go in a little closer and just kind of tell what we have. So, all right, that looks pretty cool as far as what we got, but we can obviously add in a little bit more to it. Um, but for what it is, though, it's pretty cool. Pretty neat. So we can go back into our layer style and then just add in maybe a texture to it. That doesn't look right. Um, let's see. Let's try an inner bevel. It looks a little better. Right, maybe we can just increase the depth to about maybe 74. And this is all it really entails. I mean, when you're when you're when you're texturing, um, you know, this is the, the whole process is just going back and forth and just seeing what works and what doesn't. So, go back and look at it again, and that looks okay. You know, still has, gives it a little bit more depth to it, but still, we can obviously, it, it, to me, when I'm looking at it through the render view. It doesn't have that hard, you know, texture to it. Like, it doesn't have that sort of, you know, hard edge to it. So maybe we can just kind of play around with some of the settings here. Like, maybe add a texture to it and see how that works. And then we can probably put outer bevel on, which doesn't really work. Pillow, no, that doesn't look right. Emboss looks okay. So maybe inner bevel looks all right. Then size just depends on what you're looking for. So maybe we can increase that a bit. And then the depth, we can just decrease that to about maybe 50. And save it. Diffuse. Yeah, and it looks okay. So, I don't know. Maybe we, we went a little bit too heavy on it. On uh, some of that, on um, some of the settings here. So maybe we can look at it and say, hmm. Maybe turn that, take that texture off. Maybe that, maybe that's probably the case. And then just... Play around with it. Chisel hard. That looks okay. Increase it up to about 100 this time. And render. So. All right, well, I guess for a starting point, I guess you get the drift, the gist of what I'm trying to hopefully accomplish. So obviously, you know, you could spend hours and hours doing, you know, tweaks and making this look really neat. But for the general aspect of modeling and texturing it, this is what you you can go with for a basis. So maybe for a cool little feature, we can add in a little title and say spray can 
and then you can play around with some of the fonts that Photoshop has to offer and see what you can go with. No, oh, this looks pretty cool. Chalk duster looks all right. So just play around with that. Maybe change the color to it. So let me just grab my spray can here or, or color and then change this to yellow just to make it stand out a little bit. Then we can increase the size of it. And then add some depth to it. Or we can add like an inner shadow, inner glow, an outer glow, a drop shadow, just to kind of give it more depth to it. So, you know, you can go kind of crazy with this. Just kind of seeing what works and what doesn't. So, just kind of go something like that. And then we'll do one more final save. And there you go. So spray can's a little bit too big, but you know, obviously that can be adjusted. So let's bring that down a bit. And then if we want to get really accurate, let's say you wanted to over only cover this sec this section. You select those faces and determine, alright, so it's on the bottom, sort of on the the left hand side of it. So just bring that over here. Turn our UVs on. See that it's in that specific area. Turn our UVs off. Diffuse. JPEG. Replace. Okay, so now bring it more to the left or to the right. So just bring those over here. Size it down a little bit more. There you go. All right, well. I think you have the gist. So that's it for this series. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope that you have at least get a better understanding of what it takes to model, unwrap, and texture, so on and so forth. I could go into more details as far as you know using a bump map and using lights, but I don't think that would subdue to this video. Because it gets a, then it you know that's just more added on stuff that would take a little bit too long. But maybe if I can or if I happen to have the time, I'll maybe do a separate video just for that. But I hope that this was helpful for you. If you have any questions or have any better techniques as far as how to approach this, please by all means let me know. Otherwise, enjoy, and we will see you next time.